Remember the first time you landed a job? You meet new friends, you're excited to wake up every morning, and look your best to go to work. It felt great, didn't it? And nothing beats the feeling you get when you receive your first paycheck. Then you become passionate about doing well at work, skipping meals and weekends to get a task done and stand out from the rest. After all, chasing after one's dreams is never going to be easy. But even things that we actually love doing can drag us down and burn us out. Recognizing the red flags is important before it gets out of hand. Today, we talk about the signs and causes of burnout and what you can do to get the spark back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Welcome to Med Talk Health Talk. Joining us for this program are Rian Portugues, a consultant psychologist and core member of Hashtag Mental Health PH. We also have Mr. Lloyd Luna, a motivational speaker and author of the book, Why Am I Working? Now, thank you both for making the time and it's good to have you both on the show. Now, burnout is a very common thing happening nowadays. And oftentimes people equate burnout with stress, but there's actually a difference between the two. Uh, I'll start first with Rian. What do we want to know about burnout? How can we define this? What actually is it? Uh, a lot of people may be asking. Burnout, it's a condition when you are overwhelmed by chronic stress in the workplace. So it's important to note that this is only applied in the workplace context. So kasi ito ay dinefine na sa World Health Organization, no? yung burnout. And then there are three main areas that indicate burnout. Um, number one, there is decrease in energy or meron din tayong exhaustion. Number two, there is increased mental distance from jobs or from your, uh, from your work. Number three, reduce professional efficiency, meaning hindi na nagiging magandang work output. And then, uh, na-apektuhan or nakakaroon impairment, no? Doon sa trabaho mo. Pero Rian, is burnout the same as your day-to-day -day stress? It's prolonged exposure to distress. So, makikita natin yung difference. Pag stress, not necessarily bad. Diba? Kasi may, may, may use stress pa tayong tinatawag. But when we say um, burnout, prolonged exposure doon sa distress and usually draining siya. Ito pa key differences niya. So, when we say um Stress, no? may chances na maging engage ka pa doon sa specific task na yon. Pag ikaw ay burn out, you disengage yourself at all doon sa mismong work. So yun ang gusto nating malaman ng ating mga viewers, yung difference ng burn out and stress. Because stress can go away on its own. But burn out, if left untreated, can cause serious physical and psychological illnesses, which is why it's important to prevent it before it happens. Now, unlike the common cold or flu, which hits all at once, Burnout occurs in different stages, starting from an excessive drive or an ambition and ending with a mental or physical collapse. Could you briefly explain uh, the stages in, in which one person reaches a uh, burnout? Kinategorize ko lang yung, uh, yung stages ng burnout into four based on sa aking street smart na experience. Uh, pag sinabing street smart experience, ito yung uh, for the longest time since I have been a professional speaker, ito yung my experiences that I was able to... Uh, get along the way. Number one is yung ideal stage. Yung ideal stage, sinabi kayo ni, ni Rian, uh, you are very excited, you are very idealistic. Pagpasok mo sa trabaho, pabibo ka, napakataas ang energy level mo, gagawin mo lahat ng tama. Gagawin mo lahat, makikipag-usap ka. You have so much passion and energy moving in dun sa unang phase, which is ideal. Now, the second uh, stage is yung tinatawag na real. Now, you're able to face reality as it is na isip mo na yung workplace para is hindi ganun ka, kabait sa'yo. So dumating sa point na parang, ah, akala mong ideal na, na trabaho, hindi naman pala ideal sa inyo. That particular point, uh, the, the real thing uh, uh, appears to you and then you feel like, uh, well, uh, ito pala yung katotohanan dito, now you're generating some stress na kasi yung idealis idealism mo medyo nawala na. So papasok ka dun sa stage which is denial. Hindi deny mo na hindi totoo ito. Kasi ilalaban mo pa rin lahat ng idealism mo eh. So, doon sa process na yun, nakikita natin accumulation ng stress mo. Now, the fourth part is the lethal, lethal uh, stage. Pag sabing lethal, ito na yung uh, sumuko ka na, down ka na, wala ka na magawa. And that can lead to uh, an even more serious issue that we can call mental health. 
Yes, and that last stage you mentioned though, involves mental or even physical collapse. And this may impact one's ability to cope as well, which means that medical attention may be necessary pag umabot dito sa stage na yon. Now, anyone exposed to high levels of stress can experience burnout. But there are certain careers that are more vulnerable to this condition. Lloyd, ano-ano ba mga trabaho na mas susceptible sa ganitong uh, occupational burnout? So generally lahat ng pro- ng uh, profession uh, is subjected doon sa sa burnout no. Pero ngayon, especially ngayong panahong ito, yung mga frontliners natin ang talagang number one na susceptible dito sa sa burnout na ito. I have been given a lot of talks and uh, yung ating uh, mga nurses, yung ating mga medical professionals, they are working uh, long hours and uh, longer days kaysa doon sa sa dating normal. So yung mga medical professionals uunahin natin 'yan. And then yung mga ating uh, armed forces, yung mga frontliners ng government yung mga nagbibigay ng basic services because the government cannot stop working. And so kung hindi sila matatapos mag-work and nandito yung sunod-sunod uh, na, na crisis na inaharap natin for this year, then ilalagay ko sila sa ikalwa. Ikatlo, I'm going to talk about the teachers because ang teachers ngayon, hindi rin masyado naka-adapt ka kaagad na mabilisan doon sa adjustment sa education system natin. Number four, uh, siguro yung mga full-time moms. <laughs> Isama natin yung mga parents na burn out because they too now share the part of being a teacher sa kanilang mga, mga anak. Now, burnout isn't always easy to spot, so we want to know the telltale signs of burnout. So continuing with Lloyd, how do we know if we're headed towards burnout at work? Ano tong, anong mga clues ang, ang makikita ng isang tao? I think number one is ayaw mo nang gumising. No? <laughs> gusto, mo, gusto mo lang mahiga sa, sa, sa kama mo at ayaw mo nang lumabas. Sabi nga ni Rian kanina, yun yung parang ayaw mo na, parang sinukuan mo na. Uh, number two is yung wala ka ng creativity. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka na masyadong nakapag-contribute. Kung baga parang yung trabaho mo that you are treating uh, as a mission prior, ngayon parang consumption. Yung mission mo is taging consumption mo na na you no longer have the sense of uh, purpose. Parang ginagawa mo na lang kasi kailangan mo nga uh, kitain yung yung uh, sahod and i think yung uh, uh, yung yung number three na na sign is you just wanted to go home and you just want to stop and you don't want to talk to people anymore you just want to to be there alone uh, by yourself which is again this is becoming uh, probably what one of the the things that that that, that is happening right now so ito yung kailangan na talaga ng attention because uh this can lead really to uh, to uh, another serious illness important Dennis, we want to know the causes of burnout. No, before it's too late. We'll be back after a short break. You're watching Med Talk Health Talk right here on CNN Philippines. We are in connection to healthcare. This is MedTalk Health Talk, and I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. We are talking about occupational burnout, which can be a result of various factors. Now, continuing the conversation with Lloyd, ano ano yung ibang mga factors na that can contribute to this burnout? Number one, I think yung hindi ka you, you cannot make amends dun sa ideal and dun sa real. Uh, yung 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 uh, initialing uh, pagtingin mo sa isang trabaho sa isang ginagawa mo na before you 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 got the job before you, you got into working is hindi na siya nagmatch dun sa reality of work na akala mo okay pero hindi pala okay so number one if you cannot come to terms with what is ideal and what is real I think dun papasok yung frustration and once you are frustrated ah uh, sure ang kasunod nyan sure hindi ka na masada maging productive yung contribution mo definitely is uh, mas uh, mas mababa na. Sa tingin mo sa ganitong situation natin ngayon, yung sinabi mong hindi maka-adapt or hindi maka-accept, pwede rin ba yun uh, with those who are still wishing for the previous life before the pandemic? Na ito na talaga ang new normal natin. Yeah, I think number one, we have to appreciate and understand that we are always in a transformation process. You know, prior to pandemic, lahat na mga kaya natin gawin, we were able to do that. Kaya lang, because of this quarantine, now we were restricted. Nawala yung mobility natin saka yung freedom of movement, for example. So talaga napakahirap mag-adjust at mag-adapt ka kaagad. So I understand when people say, mahirap ito, bago ito, because lahat naman ng changes, hindi naman talaga kaagad natatanggap. But then again, uh, we are in the seven-month, uh, eight-month period ng quarantine. Supposed to be, we are already adapting to it. So we are saying that because 
as long as you are in denial, as long as you are staying in the frustration stage, uh, I don't think you will ever uh, make it uh, with, with a sound mind and uh, enthusiasm. Kung maga, parang we have to face reality as it is. Ito na yung bagong uh, normal ngayon that we have to live by. And uh, understanding that will probably help us uh, get through this. Kaya lahat tayo pinagdadaanan yan, kahit na anong profession, kahit na anong trabaho, kahit na anong negosyo. And there are still so many things that you can be thankful about. That's right. And burnout can spill over to every aspect of life, including your work, home, and even social life. And if it's not addressed, it can result in serious consequences on your physical as well as mental health. Now, going to Rian, what happens when one ignores the red flags? Itong mga na ignore niya mga symptoms of burnout. Anong pwede mangyari sa isang tao? Sa individual muna na level, uh, more likely it can also lead to mental health problems. We don't know specifically kung ano yung mental health problems na yun. Pwede depression, pwede anxiety, and other um, uh, mental health disorders. Kasi may iba, di sila aware na may pre-existing condition pala sila. That's why it's important na when you feel like overwhelmed ka na ng too much stress, it's okay to seek professional health para help para ma-assess ka kung ano ba talaga yung problem mo at ma-solusyonan natin yon. Pero sige, pag-usapan natin yung occupational um uh, burnout. Ano ba yung impact nito sa workplace, sa performance ng isang individual? So more likely kapag ikaw ay burn out, no? Mataas yung absenteeism mo, more likely. Pwedeng tumataas din yung, tard- yung tardiness mo and ang impact nito, high turnover rates and nagde-decrease yung performance ng isang individual na may burn out and na-reduce din yung productivity niya, hindi na siya ganoon ka-satisfied sa work niya. And um, when it comes to relationships, sa colleagues niya, sa, sa superiors niya, or sa manager, or supervisor, more likely nagkakaroon din tayo ng problem kasi nagiging cynical na siya doon sa kanyang work. So ito lang yung ilan sa mga concerns kapag ina-avoid natin na bigyan ng um, solution yung isang problema or nahihiya tayong um, mag-ask ng help. Kaya nga yun, sa mga nanonood ngayon, if you feel like kailangan nyo ng help at feeling nyo nandito kayo sa, sa condition na meron kayong burnout, as much as possible, uh, mag-ask na kayo ng professional help kasi prevention is still the best solution. Ang approach natin sa mental health po, ganun, hindi natin naantay na ma-worsen pa po yung condition natin bago tayo lumapit sa psychologist. Kasi marami talaga itong um, parang impact sa atin. So, maaaring occupational stress to, pero pwede siya mag spilled over sa iba pang area ng buhay natin. Yeah. Maganda na sinabi mo yun, Rian, because it is easier to prevent burnout than to address it when it's already happening. More on this when we come back, right here on CNN Philippines. Welcome back to the show. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is Med Talk Health Talk. Burnout can creep into your routine without even you realizing it. Now, let's go back to Rian. Let's discuss burnout from a prevention lens. And I believe self care should be a priority in this, uh, shouldn't it? Yes. Talagang highly dapat na ginagawa natin yung ating self care. Even kami, the mental health professionals, prone kami talaga sa burnout, kaya we really highly prioritize yung self-care. Kaya ini-encourage ko yung mga nanonood na you have to look for um, self-care self-care um, activities na mag-work sa inyo. Kasi walang one-size-fits-all approach para ma-identify natin kung ano yung ba yung best na self-care sa atin. So when you say self-care, it's something that you actually enjoy. It's something that helps you to uh, reduce yung stress, Hindi siya yung pinoportray sa social media na expensive, complicated. Kasi ang self-care po, simple lang siya. Pwede yung makipaglaro ka halimbawa sa mga pets ninyo. Example na yon ng self-care. Meron din siyang physiological ano eh, um, parang uh, impact sa atin. No? May naririlis sa ating brain na oxytocin, na dopamine, no? para ma-feel good tayo. So, meron ka rin dapat kahit papaano na alone time. So ito din, another form din ng self-care, yung pag-play ng instrument, yung pag-explore ng creative outlets tulad ng um, painting halimbawa or sketching. In this situation, self-care, kailangan-kailangan po siya in order for us to be mentally and physically well. 
Now, while burnout is an isolating experience, chances are someone close to you could be experiencing the same thing and that someone might need a friend just to be there or even just lend an ear. Now, I'm going to Lloyd uh, this time. No? When deciding to help, marami sa ating uh, Filipinos who see someone who might be burned out, ang tendency ng Filipinos gusto natin tumulong. Uh, ika nga, no? So how does someone do this? Is there a proper way in order to extend that help to someone? Oh, definitely, there's no brick and mortar solution to this. Uh, this is about storytelling. This is about letting the word out. This is about asking for help. Uh, nakakatuwa yun because when we say na tayo mga Pilipino, gusto lagi natin tumulong, on the contrary, may mga tao na they want to keep it. So in other words, uh, some people are uh, shying away from asking help because they feel na yung kanilang uh, paghingi ng tulong is kahinaan. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not. Uh, courage is also about showing your vulnerability. So we, we have to start... The, we have to start this kind of conversation. No? If you are feeling that you are being burned out, if you have the feeling that you are so st- uh, stressed in your life, uh, you will have to ask for, for, for some help. Now, uh, sometimes that's not to be uh, family members kasi minsan nahihiya ka sa family members. So, pero pwede sa peers, pero, pero pwede rin hindi sa peers. Uh, but you can actually talk to strangers and then uh, just uh, ask for some uh, sound advice. Now, when, when we are being approached by uh, friends and family members, we don't have sometimes to uh, give some advice. Sometimes it's enough for us to listen. That's right. So kailangan ng parang release lang yung tao na yun, ano? someone uh, to, to, to just listen to what they have to, to say. Now, Lloyd, what are the ways in which we can prevent burnout altogether? Because if it's not you, it could be someone you actually care about. Number one, I think, is yung getting into terms. Uh, we have to face reality as it is. Not as it was or you wish it to be. No, y- yung mga nangyari sa atin in the past prior to pandemic, ang dami natin kailangang iwan doon because they are no longer real in this particular uh, time in history. So we, we have to accept uh, that things are changed now, that we have to go through this, and what we are and uh, where we are right now, these are the real things. In other words, we have to operate based on our present understanding of our present situation. We have to focus ourselves on appreciating what we have at the moment. There are two, thing, two things that we can do here. We can either sit back and then just uh, wait for uh, this situation to transform us, or we can actually influence the transformation process. In other words, gusto natin na yung magiging changes sa buhay natin, sinadya natin, ginawa natin, ginusto natin, inilaban natin. One aspect also that can affect someone having or reaching that burnout stage is their diet. Now, I want to go to Ria now because diet plays a key role also in burnout. I know there are certain foods that make someone's energy low, uh, that predisposes oneself na magkaroon ng less energy, less motivation, or less desire to do things. Can you share some tips on how diet can affect someone reaching burnout? Uh, thank you so much. No? Buti sinama din natin yung mismong diet. Kasi yes, there is a connection. No? Meron tayong natawag na brain-gut connection. So yung kinakain natin, it can also impact our um, mental health. So basically, as much as possible, we try to avoid yung mga unhealthy food, like yung too much na pizza, <laughs> too much na burger. Alam niyo na yan, yung mga masasama at uh, yung hindi masyadong nakakatulong kapag nasosobrahan at mamantika. Ayan. So, uh, importante po na kinakain natin yung mga pagkain na mayaman sa fiber, yung mga prebiotic food. At saka, yun, pwede rin tayong uh, mag-try ng mga may probiotic. No? Like, halimbawa, yung mga yogurt. Ayan. So, uh, malaki yung tulong niya kasi para uh, ma-flush out yung mga bad na uh, gut bacteria sa ating stomach. Nakakatulong siya sa pag-produce ng serotonin na important doon sa pag-regulate ng mood natin. And aside from that, syempre sa diet, yung uh, getting enough rest and sleep din. So huwag po natin kakalimutan yon para mag-improve din tayo. Kailangan natin na mag-take a step back. Yan, hindi ibig sabihin nakakaramdam tayo ng burnout ay hindi na tayo makaka-recover. So kaya kailangan lang natin talaga magpahinga kailangan lang din talaga natin na magkaroon ng mental health break or yung me time. At saka yun nga, uh, don't forget na mag-reach out tayo dun sa loved ones and friends din natin at saka sa mga mental health professional. Good advice. And with that, I'd like to thank our guest for today, psychologist Rian Portugues and motivational speaker Lloyd Luna. Being exposed to long-term or chronic stress and various stressors can cause burnout. Feeling of continual exhaustion, anxiety, and isolation from friends and family can be some of the signs. But burnout can be avoided. All you need to do is carve out time for yourself each day and honor it. Taking the time to do things for our own well-being is important 
to recharge us and be at our best. It's telling ourselves we deserve it, and we most definitely do. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. This is Metalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Stay safe, everyone.